Hey everybody and welcome. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to master market structure and order blocks to be able to take trades like this. We're gonna break this down into a couple of key steps. Step number one, we're gonna be diving into, you know, the simplistics of market structure, but also the very important things like changes of character, understanding internal weak structure and indecisiveness. Step two, we're gonna be taking a look at the merging of supply and demand with structure. Step three, we're gonna be taking a look at multi-dimensional market structure and how that plays in. And then step four, we're gonna be combining everything we learned, multi-dimensional market structure, basic market structure, with supply and demand. And then step five, we're gonna be applying everything that we just learned into this trade right here that actually runs 11.8R. So with that said guys, let's kick in to step number one. Now understanding smart money and understanding how to put things into a system, a plan, you have to build from the ground up. And the most imperative part of that system is market structure no matter how basic it may be it is genuinely the ground block foundation for any successful system so let's dive into the simplicity of market structure and let me explain it in ways you've probably not heard it before but make it easy to understand so let's begin you can see essentially what we have in red right here is bullish price action it's one dimensional, so it can be any time frame. but this is how market structure is usually gonna appear in the market, simply speaking. Price will put in a higher high, that's a break of structure, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, and then a new higher high. Now, if price wants to continue going bullish, of course, we understand that price will come back and put in a new higher high. But what happens when price shifts from bullish to bearish, which is known as our change of character well typically what will happen is price will come back you know it will hold its low but it will fail to put in a new high now if a low fails to break a high that typically means especially in bullish price action typically means we were dealing with a weak low that's the first indication that price is going to shift from bullish to bearish and then essentially the real shift is when the most recent low that put in the high gets broken. So you go from putting in a higher high to a lower low. That's your change of character. And now for those of you who don't know what a change of character is, just see it simply like this. You have two characters. One is bullish and one is bearish. When you change character, you're simply shifting from bullish to bearish. It's that easy. Then essentially what you can expect is on that change of character, price will likely then continue going lower. So what do we see? We see a change of character, a pullback, a break of structure, lower low, another pullback, and another break of structure, lower low. That's you know what market structure looks like in an ideal, simple world. But we're gonna look at what it really looks like when we apply multi-dimensional market structure. So then we come into step number two, which is actually understanding how supply and demand range into market structure. So same example. We have our market structure, low, high, price comes back, right? And on its way back down, it creates an area of supply. As price gets into the area of demand that was previously created, this is where price respects and reacts from. Price then goes and puts in a new higher high. On the way to put in the higher high, it leaves behind an area of unmitigated demand. When we come back down, we leave behind an area of supply, price comes back in, into the demand, respects the demand, and takes out the supply. So notice, when market structure is making higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs, what's actually happening is demand is taking over control. And supply and demand is a very simple concept. It's if the demand outweighs the supply, price will increase. If the supply outweighs the demand, price will decrease. It's that simple. So when price is making higher highs and higher lows, that just simply means that demand is in control there is more overall demand for price than there is a supply of it, hence why price increases. So we can see price leaves behind a supply zone, comes back down, mitigates demand, and then breaks structure. We come back down into our demand, we mitigate it, we disrespect our supply, and then we break structure. Then we come back down, we come into our demand, we respect it, 
But then we come back into our supply and we actually hold the level of supply. And this is the first time that we've seen an area of supply be respected. That's a second indication of a market shift. We respect the supply and then we change character. And then the area of supply that caused that change of character gets respected. And then the cycle continues and we start putting in lower lows and then respect in supply and disrespect in demand. So there would be, for example, an area of demand right here, disrespected, an area of demand right here that gets disrespected, and then an area of demand right here that gets disrespected. Every time price goes up, no matter how big or small, it's gonna leave behind demand. But the key in understanding how, what order blocks to trade is are they in alignment with market structure? You can't just trade any order block as we covered in the previous video. You have to trade ones that meet the criteria. And part of that is, are they in alignment with the present moment trend? That leads us now into step three. Step three is a little bit more complex, but still very simple. So let me explain it to you. It's multi-dimensional structure. It's understanding structure multi-dimensionally. How do we do that? So in red right here, we have our external, and we're gonna relate that to the four hour time frame. So we're gonna be using two different time frames. We're gonna be using number one is gonna be red, and that's gonna be our four hour time frame. Four hour time frame is typically what we use for our higher time frame. And then in green, we're actually gonna be using the 15 minute, which is our you know medium time frame. So we're gonna label this one M15. And there are two time frames. So that's what we're gonna be perceiving as price action. Now, from a four hour perspective, we're gonna mark it out in red. And we're gonna go, we have a low, we have a high, we have a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, higher high, higher low, and then a higher high. So you can see here, price is making a series of higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs. So the four hour time frame is in fact bullish, right? Pretty easy. But notice that the 15 minute in green, which let's just mark it out in green, you can see price puts in a high, higher low, higher high, okay, bullish, higher low, higher high, bullish, lower low. The 15 minute actually shifts from bullish to bearish. Now, why is that? And what does that mean? And how do we use it? Number one, that happens because the four hour is now coming for a pullback. So as we know, markets will range like this, high, low, high, low, high. In these pullback phases, your mid to low time frames are gonna appear bearish because they're coming for a pullback. So that's essentially why it happens and it's necessary to happen. So price goes lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And you can actually trade this pullback. You can trade short for the pullback, knowing where you're gonna target, which we'll get into in step number four. And then what happens? Well, the four hour bottoms out, but we only know that after the 15 minute has a change of character. So that's the confirmation that we actually use is the change of character, especially multidimensionally. When the 15 minute shifts from bearish to bullish, that's our indication that it's time now for the four hour to go and take out the previous high. Because remember, up until the four hour breaks it, we don't know what the four hour is gonna do. So our 15 minute time frame is ahead of it. That's why we use the lower time frames because it gives us an introduction to what price may do on the higher time frames before it happens so we can get involved in it. So when the 15 minute shifts from bearish to bullish, we then know, ah, okay, this is where the four hour is going to put in a higher high. So we can start looking for longs and targeting the weak high on the four hour. And that's exactly how we build it. And then what you'll notice is the same happens again. The 15 minute continues bullish and the 15 minute continues bullish because this is the extension phase for the four hour. So as price is going to put in its new higher high on the four hour time frame, you can expect to see the 15 minute going higher and higher because the present moment is increasing in price, right? The same as when price comes for the pullback, the present moment is coming down in price. 
it's still bullish on the four hour, but it's coming down in price. So you can expect to see your mid to low time frame coming down, making lower lows and lower highs and lower lows and lower highs. And so with that being said, after price makes the higher high, what's likely to happen? What's likely to happen is the 15 minute after just creating a break of structure right here to the upside, then goes and creates a what? Change of character to the downside. Again, this change of character indicates to us what? It indicates to us that the 15 minute time frame is coming back. The four hour time frame, sorry, is coming back. It's time for a pullback. And so as we see, price makes lower lows, lower highs and lower lows until eventually what happens again? Price shifts and this shift right here, this 15 minute change of character right here indicates to us now it's time for the four hour time frame to continue moving higher taking price higher, taking out the previous high, which allows us to get involved in the market before it does what it does. And notice what happens. A lot of retail traders actually trade things like breakouts. So by the time that it comes for them to get into their long position, we've been in our long position. Notice that their entry point is our exit point because we take profits at this four hour high. Why? Because we expect when, it, when this high gets broken, we're gonna come and pull back. And so if you're long in here, and maybe you have your stop loss somewhere in here, price is going to pull back into your stop loss because it needs to come back for liquidity. And most of the time you'll see price after it breaks your trip, pull all the way back. And so why would you be long in after the break? Why not get involved before we even get there by anticipating price by using multi-dimensional structure? Again, price break structure. And then what do we have? Break of structure, 15 minute change of character, 15 minute shifts back bearish we know that it's coming back for a pullback. Break of structure, lower low, higher high. Then we change character again. The change of character tells us what? The four hours is going to break structure. And what does it do? It breaks structure. This is where things get interesting because this is where we go from demand. This is a battle between demand and supply. When we get into the ranges where price is ready to shift and change character externally. So we have higher high, higher low, right? That should be in red. But then we have a higher low, but then a lower high. And so here we don't really know what price is going to do because it hasn't broken the high, but it also has respected the low. So that's when you need to just sit on your hands and wait for the market to show you its intention. And in this specific scenario right here, what we have is price actually breaks to the downside, creating a lower low, which we're going to mark out in purple. Price makes a lower low. That lower low right there is a change of character externally and the four hour, the exact same principle, because look, the four hour has just broken structure to the upside. We have this high, we have this low, higher high, shifts to lower low. So nothing has changed, just the time frame that we perceive on. So once we change character on the four hour, now we're expecting price to go lower and lower on the four hour. But the 15 minute does the exact same thing, watch. On the way down, the 15 minute is bearish. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And then price changes character. So when price changes character, that is our pullback. We now know that the four hour is coming for a pullback. Only this time, because the four hour is bearish, the pullback is up, not down. Get me? Then price puts in higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low, change of character. And then what do we know from this change of character? We now expect that because this has happened, price is gonna go and break the lows. And it does, it breaks the lows. Then we change character again. After price changes character again, pull back, changes character again, extension. And so that is how we can understand multi-dimensional market structure using the four hour and 15. And this applies to any two timeframes you use, as long as you're not going from like the daily to the one minute, right? I tend to use, you know, the rule of, you know, 15 or 20, which is dividing the time frame up equals the output you're going to get. So 15, you know, four 15 minute candles make up a one hour candle. So 16 15 minute candles make up four hour. That's between 15 and 20 X. So we can use that. Don't go outside over or under when using two different time frames. if that makes sense. Now let's move into step four 
and combine everything. Now, I know this may look messy and confusing, but I can make this super simple, so bear with me. Same thing happens again. We have the external, which is in red, which we're gonna mark out in red. And we have, that is our four hour time frame. And then we have the internal, which is green. Now look how you compare them. So what happens is the four hour puts price high, we pull back, and of course, as we know from the 15 minute perspective, we are making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, change character because now it's time for the four hour time frame to come for its pullback. Higher low, lower, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, higher high. Now notice where did this come from? We have a four hour area of demand right here. Price comes into the demand and we get that schematic of the change of character on the lower time frame. The lower time frame shifts from lower low to higher high. That is usually pairing supply and demand or order block with internal structure. If you compare them and you get this model inside of that zone, you've got the right zone. That's where you can look to take trades from because now you're pretty confident that this zone's gonna hold and take out this high. So now you've got all the different keys. You know where price is gonna go because of simple market structure, which is essentially you're expecting, you know, let's say price breaks structure, right? You're expecting price gonna make a higher high. We use the premium and discount. Now, for those of you who don't know what the premium and discount is, is just take any, any high, any low, and then essentially draw out your fib from low to high and usually price will pull back inside of this 50% before taking price higher. So we want to have our order blocks in the bottom half of that 50%. So as long as it meets that criteria, we're good to go. So you can see here without even having to draw the fib because it comes back to 50%. If we draw the fib, our order blocks down here, 50% is here, so we're good, we're lower. Price comes into our order block, gives our change of character, then we can get into the trade, take out the highs. After price break structure, what happens? The 15 minute, ah, oh, notice also, just before we break structure, we have the area of supply that the, the, the four hour caused. When we tap into it, we still have a reaction. This will typically happen, you know, most times. You'll have an area of supply, even if you are, you know, bullish. Let's try that again. Let's say you're bullish. On the pullback down, you'll create an area of supply. And then when price comes back up from the demand, because demand is in control, it, you'll still get something like this that will flip it. And so look out for those reaction points, they're called. So on this reaction point, you can see the reaction from the 50 minute. But because there is more demand than there is supply, it only holds temporarily before then eventually breaking structure. After price break structure, we have a higher high on the 15 minute, followed by a lower low, which is a change of character. That's when you can start taking counter trend trades on the 50 minute after you get the change of character. But remember, we're gonna be only targeting the most recent area of unmitigated demand. So when price gets back into that demand, what do we see? The schematic, same schematic again, which looks like what? Let's draw this out. What does it look like? Price makes lower low, higher high mitigation and gone. That's our schematic there. Price lower low, lower high, lower low, break of structure, higher high, change of character. When you see this, that is confirmed that price is going higher and it takes out the highs. Price pushes up, gives the same thing again, break of structure, change of character. We know that price is ready to come back down. It does, it comes back down into this demand. Break of structure, change of character, same thing every single time when you're using the multi-dimensional market structure. And then eventually price comes into the high, the same thing again, but this time we do get it, but we don't break the highs. Because understanding probability is that you can never predict fully when the change of character is going to happen. So if you're expecting market structure, which we will be, it puts in a higher high, we're expecting higher low, higher high. 
we're never gonna know when the time is where price just goes lower low, right? So let's say you are you expected it, you was correct, 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 wrong. So one, two, three, four, out of five times, you was able to get it correct four times. So you had, you know, 80% success rate in your prediction of whether or not price would make a new high high or not. But the key thing is you don't get involved until you get the confirmation. So after price changes character and becomes back bearish, then what happens? Now we're expecting the supply to take control. So we have our supply zone that causes the change of character. And when price gets in here, look at the green lines we have change of character on the way back up, a break of structure, change of character. Now we can get back in again on the 15 minute target in the four hour. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. So now we've gone through all of the step one to step four. I'm going to show you what this is going to look like on the actual charts on the market themselves, right? Because it's no good knowing it just theoretically. Let's understand it practically. So we're going to pull price back and we're gonna pull price back to somewhere in here. And let's just keep it like this, right? So this is our view. So what we're gonna be doing first, we're on the four hour time frame. So we're gonna mark out our simple structure. Now we have a high, a low, a lower high. Now you're asking yourself, lower high? That's not a lower high, that's a higher high. No, it looks like a higher high, but it's actually a liquidation. So if price does not break and close above or below for that matter, it's not a break of structure. If it only wicks it, it's a liquidation. It doesn't count as a break of structure. It's just a liquidation. So when you see that, that's a good sign as price will continue to make lower lows. You want to compare where the body closes. The body closes here. So the body closes lower than this. So it is a lower high with a liquidation. So liquidations are a good thing because once prices liquidate the highs, it has free room to run the lows easier. So essentially, after price liquidates the highs, price then does what? Break structure. So we continue lower low, break of structure down, pull back, again, price down again, break of structure. Price then pulls back, has more of a complex pullback when it pulls back like this. That usually complex pullback leaves room for liquidity, which is good. That's why we like complex pullbacks. So that complex pullback leaves area of liquidity. It also creates, you know, you've got these relatively equal highs, which is also liquidity to the upside. So essentially what we see then is a lower high because this high is still lower than this high up here and then price goes lower low again from the low we break yes we break very close but still a break break of structure after this we have a higher high so notice we've now shifted from bearish to bullish price is put in a higher high then what does price do? Price pulls back, liquidates, doesn't break, it liquidates, right? Liquidation. Liquidates the lows and then goes and takes out the highs and puts in a what? Break of structure, puts in a higher high. So now you want to mark out your trading range. Your trading range is simply just your most recent high and your most recent uh, your most recent high and your most recent low that's your trading range so our trading range is from here this just helps you simplify what it is that you're looking for so you ask yourself you say okay cool i have my trading range now what am i expecting i'm expecting higher highs we've just broke structure so let's mark out our fibonacci and understand our 50 percent we're expecting that price is going to pull back likely into this 50%. Why? Because that's what price usually does. If we go all the way back here and we go, okay, the first break of structure to the down, 
if we mark out the high to the low right here you will see price here's the 50 percent price pulls back just close to the 50 percent not fully but very closely second of all price break structure and then where does price pull back to again mark out fib from high to low price pulls way back into 50 percent all the way back up to around 80 percent 90 percent retracement then price break structure again and then of course after that essentially you see price change character to the upside when price breaks structure up and we mark the low to the high price comes well back into 50 percent it end up liquidating the lows so out of all of those scenarios only one didn't reach the 50 percent and it was barely then you know it's pretty high probability that price is going to at least pull back 50 percent so for that reason we are essentially looking at the points of interest that break the structure so structure gets broken here so anything that's above that we're not interested in why would we be because it's the demand that broke the structure that's important because that's where the remaining orders are pending so now we need to eye out our demand zones and of course we know our demand zones are the pre last sell to buy candles that have imbalance in them and both of these candles that I have marked out right here have exactly that criteria right there is no other imbalance the only imbalance is here and you know here and of course here but that imbalance is not important because it doesn't break structure so now we have our points of interest we have our four hour which is bullish right if we go back to the examples right now we understand that you know we have the bullish four hour step two we understand that we have now we have our demand zones right here is our demand zone you can see it reacts pushes higher here is our demand zone reacts pushes higher demand zone reacts pushes higher so now we have our demand zones we have demand zone number one and number two so we have our bullish so we're expecting higher highs we have our demand zones we know where price is coming from now what we need is multi-dimensional structure and we need that to be aligned with the areas of demand so what are we looking for then well simply put inside of these demand zones we are looking for this if we move you out of the way simply put all we're looking for is on the 15 minute for price to come down bearish and then change character higher high that's exactly what we're looking for so what do you do you wait for the four hour to get into that level like it does here and then when it gets in there you're going to go down to the 15 minute time frame now when you get onto the 15 minute time frame you need to understand your market structure because you need to know where price is breaking structure from so if we go all the way back here we see that price puts in a high pulls back higher high higher low expecting a higher high it fails to we break structure we change character we pull back we break structure we pull back we break structure we pull back with one two three bullish candles so that counts as a pullback and then we put in our lower low so now again same rules apply what we did with the h4 we're going to take our trading range our trading range is this high to this low and now we're either waiting for price to change character so we can get into a trade or continue breaking structure down and then we'll have a new high and maybe it will get pulled back and break structure again into this one we'll have a new high and then we'll change character and then we'll go so we're just waiting now to see a change of character we need to see our entry model and it has to come from in this gray box or this gray box it's that simple so let's play price and see kind of what happens so price begins to make its way toward but notice what are we doing we're building a bunch of liquidity in this area so we don't want to be putting our stop losses where there is liquidity right so let's see how price will react okay okay so price runs into that pool of liquidity 
and there we go. So price has now taken out that liquidity, which is good because we don't want that liquidity to be there. Again, if we just pull this across, because that's going to be our change of character if it does break it. Okay, so price actually breaks and closes and there is our change of character. Now notice here what's interesting is the only area of demand that has imbalance that broke structure is the area right here. And so that is essentially where you can look to take a trade if you trade the 15 minute. Of course, we inside of the the mentorship that we have, we mainly use the one minute for more confirmation. So we'll go into the one minute and look for the same schematic. But just for the sake of the simplicity here, we're using the 15 minute only. So that's where we're going to be getting into our trade. And now understanding our fractal structure, we're taking this trade based on the four hour because the four hour is bullish and we're inside of a four hour demand. So we're expecting the four hour high to be taken out. That's why that is your take profit. And that's essentially the trade idea. And so we wait now to see price tag us in. We move to break even. And I also want to walk you guys along how to manage this trade. So the moment that price breaks structure, stop loss at break even. Now watch what happens here because this is actually really interesting. So we've moved our stop loss to break even, but notice what price is doing. Price is building a ton of liquidity on the sell side, which is literally asking to be ran. And then price comes in, runs most of the liquidity, runs the highs, and then creates even more liquidity when it creates this liquidity in here. Price begins to jet off to the highs, doesn't quite break structure to the upside, and then price comes and plummets all the way back down. So we're gonna go to the one hour time frame to show you what happens here. So notice price built a ton of liquidity it swept the liquidity, it took the highs, and now it's created more liquidity on the sell side. But notice what else it's done. It's literally eluded retail traders. We've created perfect equal highs, which is liquidity. That's a reason for price to go up there. But notice we have this high right here. It looks like this high gets respected, right? So that is an area of resistance to a lot of retail traders. There's always huge amounts of liquidity at swing highs and especially when you have something like this where price reacts from it creates a perfect double top you are asking for liquidity and then price does this price melts all the way back down and entices traders to look at shorts and so what will happen is whilst traders are watching this go down they're getting FOMO and they're getting in all the way along these lows down here which means what we have a ton of liquidity up here and a ton of liquidity in this price leg which is literally asking for price to do exactly what it goes and does straight after that, which is run all of the liquidity and then run into our take profit. Congratulations on making your way to the end of this video. That tells me that you are a serious trader and we are looking for five new serious traders like yourself to join our mentorship program. Links are down below, sign up today and I'll see you hopefully on the inside.